Hi everybody, this is Anne. Since we started making these videos, I've discovered two things. First, I'm very inspired by paper origami creations. Second, I enjoy figuring out how to translate those origami paper sculptures into projects for clay. In this video, I'll show you three hand-built clay projects I've engineered using origami folded boxes as my inspiration. This first project I'm calling the twist top face. I began by rolling out a slab to a quarter of an inch and ribbing it smooth on both sides. I designed this template piece for the three sides of the vase. Note the arrows on either side. It's important to mark the clay along those arrows. I carefully cut three of these template pieces from the slab along with those marks. For the first piece, I used a 45 degree bevel cutter to cut from that mark all the way to the bottom. I repeated this along the other side of the piece. Using my fingers, I rounded the top edge of the slab all the way around to where the other beveled edge begins. I turned over the piece and softened the back side of the top edge. I repeated the same steps for each of the three cut slabs so they look like this. Now I want to join them. I took my scoring tool and scored along each beveled edge. Now only the beveled edges, not the tops. With a brush, I slipped both scored edges of the middle slab. I then lifted the first side and attached it along the center slab, gently pushing the two beveled edges together. Note that the tops of the slabs are still detached. When the first side was joined, I did the same thing to the other side. To make sure all the slabs are firmly in place, I rolled thin coils and attached them with my fingers and a brush along the seams. I then slipped the remaining beveled and scored edges and pushed those together to close the form. I turned the form on its side and placed one more rolled thin coil into that last seam making sure the bottom of the piece was an equilateral triangle with all the sides straight. I went back around the outside of the piece making sure each of the corners were crisp but not sharp to the touch. I then turned the vase upright. Remember, the top edges are not joined at this point. Joining them is where the folding comes in. I folded inward each of the three top tabs towards themselves until they were interlocked in place like this. In case you missed it, here it is one more time. What you should end up with is a top where the bottom of each tab meets up with the adjacent slab and the top is like flower petals. To attach the top edges, I scored and slipped each edge, then attached small coils to each seam under each flap. To maintain the sleek nature of the vase, I was careful to try and make this as invisible as possible.
Now I need an opening for the flower, so I used my medium hole puncher. Normally, I would wait until the clay was leather hard to punch the hole, but since I have the camera ready now, I'll punch it for you. To finish this off, I need a bottom. I rolled out a small piece of clay into a quarter inch slab and ribbed both sides. I set the vase down on top of the slab and scored around the outside. I lifted the vase off the slab and scored both the slab and the bottom of the piece. I slipped the slab, then set the vase back down. I used the back of my finger to push the clay from the slab up into the seam area of the vase. I did this on all three sides in order to get a better seal. To cut the excess clay away from the bottom, I used a straight edge butted up right next to the wall of the vase like this. Once all the excess clay was removed, I smoothed all the edges with my fingers and made sure as much of the inside was smooth as well. Now here it is all dried and cleaned up ready to be decorated. I love how the whole vase echoes the shape of a tall flower just opening up. If you would like to see these pieces once they're finished, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so we can notify you when we post the pictures to the community section. Now we're going to make a purse folded vase with these three template pieces. Again I rolled out a slab and cut the templates out. Don't forget to cut two of the side pieces. First, I'll bevel the sides of the rounded template piece. Note that I bevel this one all the way around from one side to the other. With the bowling pin shaped piece, I'm only going to bevel that from the bottom of each side to its middle finger. Again, I'm using my 45 degree bevel cutter for these cuts. I then use my fingers to flatten, round, and soften that middle finger like this. For these other two slabs, I beveled each side from the bottom to the top so that you'd end up with these four pieces cut like this. I again used my scoring tool to score each edge. To connect, I lay the first three pieces like this and slip the inside edges of each side piece. I lined up the side piece and attached it into place, trying not to stretch the slabs too much along the curved edges. Note that the side pieces will pull inward. I gently straightened them out so they were about 90 degrees from the bottom piece. I rolled thin coils and attached them to each inner seam so they were nice and flush to the walls. I then turned the piece upright, slipped the remaining scored edges, and attached the last pieces to the sides. Again, I made sure the edges had a good seal and that they were nice and crisp but not too sharp. Now here's where the folding comes in. I folded the front part towards the center, then gently folded the top over the front edge. When I was sure the flap was centered, I slip, scored, and attached it to the front piece.
For the bottom, I repeated the same process as I did for the first project. I rolled and ribbed a slab, scored, attached, and removed the excess clay. Now here it is, all dried and ready to decorate. I love that shape, but the good thing about using templates for this is that you can alter the template to create unique shapes while still keeping the top folded structure. Lastly, I'll show you how to make a side folded slotted vase with these two template pieces. Again, I started with a quarter inch slab. This time, instead of cutting the templates out like the last two projects, I'm cutting the slab into four smaller, more manageable rectangles as I'll need to alter the slab a little more. Make sure each rectangle is big enough for a template piece to fit onto. For the first rectangle, I turned it long ways and this time I placed 1 8 inch sticks along each side. I rolled the top quarter of the slab until it tapered down to an eighth of an inch, then ribbed both sides smooth. Here you can see the tapering. Now I place the template piece so the top of the template was situated along the thinner part of the slab. Don't forget to mark the slab where the arrows are located. I then used my 45 degree bevel cutter to cut from that mark down to the bottom of both sides. I repeated this process for all the slabs. I then used my fingers to soften, round, and flatten those thinner top edges like so. To attach, I placed the first three pieces like this and scored all the bottom beveled edges with my scoring tool. I then slipped both edges along the scored edges of the center piece and attached the first side like this. I then lined up the second side and attached it into place. Again, I added thin coils just to the inside seams and smoothed them so they were flush with the walls. Remember, the tops of the slabs are unattached at this point. I stood the piece upright and straightened the walls in preparation for the last wall to go into place. I slipped the fourth wall and attached it just along the bottom beveled edges. Again, I made sure all the edges were straight and well attached. Like the other projects, I attached coils to the inner side seams. I also attached the floor at this point as I can easily attach coils to those inner seams too. To close the piece, I placed a small piece of newspaper to the inside of one of the clay tabs like this. I then folded each tab backwards just a little. Then I pushed the walls inward so the tabs lined up together. The newspaper helped to keep them from sticking together. Once they're lined up in the center with the curve of the walls as symmetrical as you can, then you bend one of the side walls down over the tabs so the walls all meet up together on that side. Next, I bent the other side downward so it overlapped the first side. Again, I made sure the curves were symmetrical and the walls touched each other. I then separated the two tabs so the back sides of each tab were pressing against the folded down sides like this, thus creating an opening for the flowers. I adjusted the tabs until they were straight, centered, and symmetrical. I marked where each flap joined to the centerpiece and scored and slipped those areas. I then replaced each flap and made sure each seam was tightly connected. I then scored and slipped the overlapping flaps to join together to come up with this cool piece. Now here it is all decorated and ready to go into the kiln. It has such a unique look and really great lines. It would definitely be a conversation piece.
I'm really inspired by these origami folding designs. I hope they're inspiring to you too, and that you can give them a try. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in the studio.